Hi there, it's me, Poom Viparit, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi everyone, it's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press today. I am so happy to be joined by Poom Viparit. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Hi, how are you? I am doing well. You know, how have you been holding up and keeping busy during this pandemic? Uh, it's actually been quite a, you know, as stressful as everything outside the house is. It's, it's been relaxing to stay home for me um, after been, you know, after touring so much for the last two years. It's been really nice to just, you know, um, I've been renovating my, my little home studio. I just got this fake plant to my right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been really good. Um, like I said, I've been renovating my house, so that's been keeping me a bit busy and writing songs. Who knows when I'll release them. Yeah, it's been good. <laughs> Yeah, so like you mentioned, kind of uh, renovating your place, the housework, house cleaning kind of stuff you never got to do before. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it's common in, in Canada or Vancouver, but in, in Thailand, it's it's very common that you stay in the big family house. It's kind of an, an Asian thing. And yeah, it's been really nice to reconnect with everybody at home and kind of take care of, um, you know, the house, like literally and figuratively as well, I guess. Yeah, family time is always something to treasure and cherish, I'm sure. Yeah, but yeah. you did play um, a virtual concert mid-July. You had a couple of, I think, live stream performances like on Earth Day. So while it's not the same as being on tour, uh, being back with the band, performing in some capacity must be nice. Yeah, it, it is nice, but um, you're right. It's a totally different experience playing to like a camera and like a few cameramen. But like when you do it, you're addressing like multiple, you know, like a lot of people. It's, it's a very different experience, but I'm, I'm so grateful that I still get to, you know, perform in whatever format it comes in. Yeah. So Bangkok uh, Balter Club was released last September. Take me through the process of Poom as a songwriter, even with you said you're writing new songs. You know, where do you draw inspiration from and what typically comes first in one of these? Um, for me, it really varies. Um, back then, I used to write a lot from, you know, personal experiences, my, my, like, um, my personal journal, uh, what I went through as I grew up. Um, but lately, I've been kind of uh, taking a step back from my own stories and kind of commenting on what I see, what I, what I agree with, what I disagree with. And um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm a very interesting songwriter, like, because there's no really, like, solid process to my writing. Whatever comes, comes, and it's, it is what it is, yeah. I like something you said before that, you know, like, writing comes in waves, just like life. So I think as, as long as you keep observing, uh, it will come to you. Uh, you mentioned yeah. kind of, like, social commentary, so maybe what's going on in the world right now. There's, there's so much going on in the world right now. You know, if you're on like any social media platform, I feel like you can, you know, like there's, there's weekly news that you can write, you know, whole albums about really, I think. Um, it's an interesting time and to be home as well, um, being exposed to that through like screens only. Um, it's, it's definitely been a very interesting year. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited myself to, to kind of see, you know, how my writing develops in this year of resting and yeah. And hopefully at some point, um, getting back into the studio to actually record and then release. So uh, if not 2020, hopefully early next year. That's, that's, that's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> I do that because it, it's, it's so unpredictable. And um, like you can see with anyone who planned tours earlier this year, everything has moved to like early next year. But with how the world is working right now with like, diplomacy between countries it's really hard to fly anywhere yeah that's international it's all domestic right now realistically so um my my ideal plan is to release an album and be able to tour with that album because I, I would love to play to like an actual human crowd that would be that would you be do nice you have a festival planned i think in thailand in december so hopefully that will go ahead yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful that it will work out. But like I said, I, I would pick safety first. Because um, when you think about it, when you're an artist or a musician at these festivals, it's really safe because you're, you're up on stage. You're quite far apart from your, like, from your bandmates and all that. But if you're in the audience, it can still be quite, you know, you're pretty 
crammed in there. So I, I hope I hope we come up with a way to make it work. Yeah. So I described your sound to my friends as being kind of breezy, neo soul, indie pop. How would you describe how your sound has evolved since like 2014, your early days as a musician? Um, I definitely think my, my, my songs are still on a very mellow and chill end, um, regardless of if I'm doing like a high tempo or a slow tempo. Um, genre wise, yeah, lately my, 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 my later influences have been Neo Soul, um, but I'm, I think I've always been indie pop, indie rock um, alternative at heart. Um, but the current stuff that I'm listening to and I'm, is inspired by and is writing is, is kind, of, kind of like a hybrid mixture of a lot of those things that I, I enjoy. So, yeah. so uh, you've been with the same label, Rats Records, since the very beginning when they discovered your covers on YouTube. What has it meant to have their support and you know, backing as you continue to grow as an artist? Um, it's, it's been really lovely. Uh, we're... The people who I work with were not like a huge, um, huge label, like a huge business with like lots of plans or anything. So it's it's based on the individual's creativity and their their own timing. So I've I've really appreciated that like um, they haven't forced anything or um, everything just kind of happened naturally. And I, I I I've really as I've grown older as an artist and as a person, I've really appreciated that you know time and space. Creative freedom is so important as an artist. Um, like you mentioned, it's kind of small, the company they keep. Um, can we expect any collaborations between uh, yourself, uh, Talisa, Rocketman in the future? I really hope so. Like Those, those guys are, are young, but again, I am, I am young too. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I love seeing like, um, new artists come in with a lot of energy and enthusiasm um, yeah. to make demos, to you know, record and release stuff. So. I hope so. I hope we get to play like a, like a show together. Where yes, to a Rats Records time. like holiday show, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't done that for, I think, since 2005. Uh, not 2005. <laughs> 2015. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was 10 back then. Um, 2015, yeah, 2015, yeah. Can you imagine like children playing? <laughs> like the, you can go back in the past. Hey, that's like a music video idea, something like that. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. <laughs> so you've said if you weren't a musician, you'd be a producer developing other talent or a filmmaker. Tell me a bit about these two passions and are they still something you're hoping to pursue? Um, definitely. Like, even though I am, you know, at the front end of my career, as in like, I am, you know, very much like transparent, like boom, this is boom. I, I've, I've always been interested in working in pre-production, post-production, or like production in general of anything creative, whether that's, you know, filmmaking, commercials, design, or, you know, music production. It's, it's really fun to kind of not have to center everything on yourself and your ideas, but help develop other people's ideas and create that into reality. Yeah, I hope. Maybe in a couple of years, I'll get to do some one of those things, yeah. You did co-direct the video for Softly Spoken, which came out earlier this year. So being behind the camera for one of your videos must have been a neat experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've missed it. It's been a long time. Not too long, but two years since I've directed something of my own. So it was really, really refreshing for me to do that. And you did cameo as a security guard, which um, fans will know that you said when you were younger, you wanted to grow up and be a security guard. So that was like an Easter egg moment. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad people picked up on that. And it was a, such a joy for me to go shopping for a security guard up. It, it took me <laughs> yeah. a while. But yeah, it, was, it was really cool to do that. Yeah. So you've talked about the increase in anxiety that's come with, you know, music not only being your passion, but your career as well. So how do you manage this on a daily basis? Um, I think I'm, I'm good with it now. Like um, when I wrote what I wrote in Hello Anxiety, when I was going through that phase, I, I was just in that transition period where I didn't really know how to handle myself. Um, um, yeah, lots of changes happened um, in terms of my career and my own free time was different. Um, my privacy was um, not gone, but a lot of it was taken away. Um, and not like I'm not grateful for my career and what's happened, but it took me a long time to deal with that. And I think being home all this time and kind of just writing 
again, without any distractions has really helped. It helps you to realize, you know, what you're doing this for, how much you really do love it. And it's been good for me. As you mentioned, being back home, you know, surrounding yourself with a good support system and people like I know it's the same crew you take on tour all the time. So you almost just be best friends. Yeah, we're pretty close. Uh, we've been through a lot of things together in, in, the, in our first two years of touring. So, yeah, we're definitely a very tight knit crew. And I can't wait to travel with them again. Like, whenever that's So be. what is a place have you guys talked about? What is a place you haven't been to yet on the road that you hope to go to in the future? Um, I think we'd love to go to Canada again because we were there for so short. Um, definitely maybe somewhere like Texas or somewhere that's not on the west or east coast of the states. I'd love to do one in Australia, New Zealand, because um, I grew up in New Zealand and it would be surreal to play there. And maybe South America someday. Anywhere really, anywhere we haven't been, I'm, I'm always open to go somewhere I've never been. And there's some great kind of like film pictures that they capture along the way, I know as well. Um, now your branding is super cool and colorful, whether it be uh, merch, tour posters, album art. So tell me how these designs are created. Um, I usually work with um, the same artist or I, I might draw myself. So it's, it's just my taste aligns with hers. And uh, I don't know, I, I like color. And I feel like um, it matches what my sound is like or how I would like my, um, my sound to be represented with colors or visuals. Um, I, I didn't really think about it too much until you mentioned it. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I, I do have a lot of colors going on. Even my guitar strap is like rainbow. And then a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just like, I just, I just like colors, man. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give her a shout out Helen Helen Stetler's yeah, yeah, Cosmic yeah. Nips I've yeah, seen her yeah. work it's incredible um, I know thank she you, did an exhibition you. as well so she uh, was here before but she just left the room yeah. oh, oh <laughs> she was about to make a cameo in this interview yeah. well, um, we can tell her you can tell her later yeah her work is incredible I, I was, so uh, yeah. thank you people check her out hopefully a lot more uh, to come collaboration wise as well um, more albums I hope so too yeah I hope so too yeah. Um, so let's talk about your fans. They are also amazing. I see new fan art on places like Instagram daily. When you see these, what is your response? It's crazy. Um, it's, it's a really nice feeling that they took the time to, you know, draw or, you know, be inspired by my music. So I'm super grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. It makes me smile a lot when people, you know, take the time to send you something or make something. Yeah. And you do like them on Instagram, I know, uh, when you have the time to look through them. Have you been out meeting a lot of them on the road on tour? What is that kind of reaction like when you have fans, international fans? Um, I think I enjoy meeting, meeting people who come to the shows as much as I like playing the shows. Because when else are you going to get the experience to do this? You know, like, um, you, you can see every... Uh, you know, everybody can see statistics of how many followers you have, how many listens you have per month. It goes really deep and it's very transparent nowadays. But the experience of meeting people who actually listen to your music, um, who come to the shows, you know, who pay the fee to come stand in front, you know, it's surreal. I would, I miss that. One, one of the things I miss the most about touring. Yeah. And it's crazy because like you mentioned, people pay to see you. You probably paid to see a lot of artists when you were younger. So yeah. having that kind of full circle moment when you're like, oh my goodness, people are paying to see me. Hopefully a lot more to come in the future. <laughs> Whether they pay or like just for them being there, it's, 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 it's good to me. I, I just like performing to people. Um, I guess before then, before I got to do this in front of like a larger amount of people i have always been very sort of shy with the music so from that transition to you know seven eight years to be doing what i'm doing now it's been very surreal so yeah i miss it a lot humbling experience to say the least we yeah. have one more signature question for you if you could be any ice cream flavor which would you be and why oh man um rum raisin all the way <laughs> Do I have to say why? Like, would that make me sound like I like alcohol? Um, I don't know. I think it's 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 a very unique flavor, and um, we've got raisins, 
and raisins or dried grapes. <laughs> and then I assume there's a bit of rum in there. Like it, it varies between countries. Like some countries it's like brandy. I don't know if it's always rum and rum raisin. But like, I don't know, it's just nothing tastes like rum raisin and it, it goes down well, I guess. <laughs> That's metaphorical. I think that's metaphorical <laughs> for your music. It doesn't have to be all about the alcohol, but that's a great <laughs> answer. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, Poom, for taking the yeah. time to chat. We really appreciate it. No worries, Bangkok yeah. Balter Club is out now. Be sure to give it a listen. New music coming uh, from Poom, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>